you have a great new movie to talk about also talk about this breach because i saw it and it's it's very exciting and, and on a lot of different levels one it's hard not to watch a movie like this right now and not find parallels to what everyone's going through which has come up a lot but how much of that have you thought about how much of that is, it, it seems very real in lots of ways well the fun fact for me was the reason, and obviously we did this pre-COVID, this movie was all shot pre-COVID. The reason I was drawn to it is because of the director, John Suits. And John Suits and I worked on a very appropriately named movie called Pandemic uh, about five, five, five or six, five years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, I absolutely loved working with John and we made that movie for very little money and I'm really proud of it. I think it turned out quite quite well. And so his name was on it. I, listen, I was thrilled about Bruce Willis, but I was more thrilled about John <laughs> sure. Um And then, um, you know, reading this, thinking about the script and thinking about the movie now compared to when we shot it back then, it's like, okay, it's basically as though sort of we've ruined this earth and we've got to take certain people to it to another earth, but also in a weird parallel, it's as though COVID infects the ship. Now it doesn't, it doesn't give people the flu, it turns them into zombies, but it's like yeah. that kind of rampant infestation, something that's horrifying. So yeah, there's a huge part of me that's like, what if this is the future? I mean, what if this, I mean, what, I, I, mean, I hope to be dead by then. I mean, I really, <laughs> I don't want to have to be cryogenically frozen in a pod of 300,000 people going to New Earth. That doesn't sound fun for me. No, no. But the scary part is nothing seems crazy anymore when you see a film like this. There's a, there's a small part where people think, all right, this could happen someday, which is kind of scary. It's very scary. It's very scary. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've been asked that question. Like, I mean, I guess, because we're not we're clearly not taking care of this planet. So why don't we yeah. go? The idea of us going to ruin another one doesn't seem so... In, insane talk about playing such a tough cool woman and and you get to one be the medic two you get to you know light him up with with gunfire alongside bruce willis this must be a dream come true just on a fun level for an actress oh it was such it was it was so much fun and you know um bruce is lovely and i i say that because people are so interested in him bruce is actually quite funny which i don't think a lot of people would see and um, I watched the, uh, what is it? The Friars Club, the roast, his roast. They roasted him a couple of years ago. I watched yeah. that before I went. And I got to see like a funny side of him and I got to see people make fun of him. And he, you know, he's still so badass, but he's also super chill and super nice. And we had a gas on set and it was really, I mean, we were shooting in a very small town in Georgia called Fitzgerald. And again, I had no cell service and um, no internet service. So I just had Wi-Fi at the place that I rented and Wi-Fi at the one pizza joint that served wine mm -hmm. and Wi-Fi at the one Mexican place that had good tacos and margaritas. Um, so, but he, so, so again, it was sort of that same situation, but he was very jovial and very fun on set. He hung out with people off set. And we got to make this, I mean, it's pretty cool. I guess we should a movie with Bruce Willis. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> One of my favorite movies, and I know that most people think of him as, you know, Die Hard and Action. But um, one of my favorite movies of all time is Moonrise Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And his turn in that, I mean, oh God. Yes, it's Anderson, one of my favorite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very yeah. cool. So I was kind of like, oh, he was in that. It's one of my favorite movies, but uh, he still, I mean, he's he he was it was it was great to work with him and it was so yeah. nice. Um, meet someone who I've watched for years and consider talented, and I wanted him to be fun, and he was totally fun, yeah. and that was that was cool. Awesome. How fun is it for you to show your range and do something? Because you've done everything, and you've been glam, and you've been in distress, and then something like this where you just you know you're in charge, and you're you're funny, and you're tough, and you're shooting the guns. How much fun is it to show this side of what you? I love it. I love it. Um, and John was, you know, that, that scene, the, the autopsy scene where I've got a lot of words. I have all the words, as John C. <laughs> said. Uh, he, there's always a conversation between whoever's got the, you know, the biggest, the most lines in a scene, if they're difficult. And the director says, do you want to go first or do you want to go last? Or do you want? And for sometimes for emotional stuff, I, I need to go first because I'm already like 
there emotionally with this woman was no, no 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 please put it on the back of my head for as long as you can so that I cannot screw this up when it's on my coverage um and so John and I had a, had a dialogue about that but it was I love I love playing strong women and I love the idea that because one of my biggest pet peeves is when they take someone and yes I'm the medic and I have had military training but I'm not a badass crazy fighter who's gonna just take down everything and suddenly I'm a ninja and I can do round cows kicks and all that stuff. I hate when that happens because yeah. it's just I can't buy into it. Um, so they wanted it to be a little bit sloppy and maybe even like gun what is this kind of thing which I really appreciated and. I hadn't played a medic before. I hadn't played it. Well, kind of Scarlet and G.I. Joe was kind of the doctor, but I didn't have any like medical jargon really. Um, so yeah, I always scoop up those roles. And I, I don't mind, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mind how severe the makeup is or the hair or what they want. I'm, I'm not, and not begrudging anybody who is, but I'm just not one of those actors who wants their hair perfect. And eyelashes in and full makeup I've shot stuff without any makeup at all and I love it because it's more sleep for me and less time in the makeup chair uh but yeah um uh, that was really that was really fun and to kind of I mean Anne was there she's the other female in the in the film um but to kind of be a lot of times on set like the only girl it's kind of cool because you have to hang with the boys which I've always done my whole life anyway so yeah. I felt right and then you've been part of some of the, you know, some of the greatest cool TV series and films of the last, you know, decade or so. And having done Alias and Star Trek and all these cool, cool things. How much attention do you still get for that at this point in your career in terms of fans and on social media, people that have certain roles that they love and are always throwing things you out? Know, it, it's interesting because um, obviously I, I, I went to a lot of I would go to conventions because it's super fun. You get to interact with your fans and yeah. obviously that's not happening anymore. Shocker. We're not having large gatherings of fans. Um, so I joined this thing called Cameo, which I didn't really know about. And I, when my, my uh, signing agent was like, well, it might be fun for you. And I thought, you know, I'd like to, I'm really interested to see if, because um, I always, Usually for me, well, first of all, the first role I ever had, this is funny, was one one episode of Sex in the City. And I still get recognized for that. Wow. I, I have had different colors of hair. So I've gone red, I've gone dark, I've got, but I still get Sex in the City and then Alias, people know Rachel Gibson from it. I mean, they're, they're yeah, um, I, get, I get a lot of Alias requests and a lot of people that um, did cameo or tweet have tweeted at me. Um, even recently, because a lot of people are obviously spending a lot more time at home, watching a lot more TV or maybe re-watching shows that they liked or movies that they liked, because I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, they ask me, They want a lot of times they want to know about, the, I mean, Alias was my first sort of notable, like really big role. And they ask a lot of questions about that. And then I get a lot of fan questions about Criminal Minds, because people want to know about... How was it like? I've been watching for years. Is Shamar Moore as hot as he looks in person? I'm like, yes, right. he is. Um, is Joe Montana the nicest guy in the world? Yes, absolutely. Um, but then I did a movie, this is years and years ago, probably over a decade ago, definitely over a decade ago. And it was it's what they've called now sort of a cult Christmas movie. And it was called P2. Right. And I get asked about that a ton on social media, a ton, which I love because it came out and kind of wasn't a great success. I don't think it lost any money. I don't think it made that much money, but now it's like become this sort of cult Christmas movie, which is quite cool. Um, and then I do get the Star Trek. I do get a, a, the Star Trek just because playing Gala and being entirely green, but that is one that unless you're a real fan, if you see me on the street, you're not gonna be like, that's Gala. Because I was all green with all the red hair. Um, and then Continuum, um, because it was a season, a show that I did for four seasons, um, people really talk about Kira Cameron a lot and um, do ask a lot of questions. And I try to get back to people as frequently um, and as often as possible for requests. But uh, it's nice. It's always, I'm not, I'm not at, the, at the level where, well, I'm not going outside my house anyway, but I'm not at the level where people coming up in, asking me questions is bothersome. I'm sort of like, oh my gosh, you you appreciated one of my performances. That's great, thanks. I'll tell you anything you wanna know. 
Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.